Hi right, guys, today we're going to be looking at how to get Windows 11 running in uh, on Linux in a virtual machine using uh, Virt Manager QM KVM. Uh, this is basically an update to a video I made close to a year ago, um, which actually was you know how to get Windows 10 to be faster on a Linux virtual machine. And uh, this is, like I said, a follow-up to that, but this is now specifically to Windows 11 because Windows 11 has got a few extra things such as TPM, etc. Look at an example. Uh, well, yes, I'll show you. Windows 11 does run. And there we have it. Uh, there we can log into Windows 11. And there we are. We're in Windows 11. Okay, let's shut it down again. All right, so um, everything that you're going to be doing uh, or that you need to download, I've got in this little file here. I will put it down in the descriptions, um, but you might not have access to that for whatever reason, and you can see it here. So the first thing is, uh, well, the ordering is not right here, I suppose, but you obviously want to make sure that you actually have a Windows 11 ISO disk um, to install Windows 11 from. And then uh, after that, um, you're going to need to have the Virt IO drivers for Windows. That's also an ISO file. Basically, all the steps that I'm talk going to talk about is covered on this page, um, except obviously the Windows 11 specific stuff, because that's all for Windows 10. And then once we're in Windows, well, there's another download we must do, which is the Virt IO guest tools. I did not need that when I did Windows 10 uh, in the past, but Windows 11, uh, it looks like I have to do that else. Uh, it B sods, it blue screens, if you can believe that. Let's just get back to, I'll take you back to, all right. So this is that first page I was telling you about where basically everything you can, you can follow this and everything I'm going to show you now, this, this covers quite nicely. And then if you want to go to the downloads, uh, so we click on this official Fedora uh, link and then on yeah we go to this readme.markdown. It's basically taking to a GitHub repository. Here is the Windows, the ISO that I said that you need for the Windows drivers, and then here is the actual guest tools, which you need to install at basically right at the end. And that's really it, so let's get started. So we create a new, uh, from an ISO image, we create a new virtual machine. Uh, so if you've downloaded your ISO to somewhere, or you already have it somewhere um, on your computer, just navigate to it, double click on it, and you'll notice here automatically detect the, uh, detect the operating system from the installation media. It detects Windows 10. Um, that's fine. There is no Windows 11 option here yet. Um, and it doesn't cause any problems to use Windows 10 there. So just leave it as is. And then memory, um, I'm going to give it 16 gig because finally I have a computer that's capable of much more <laughs> than the one I used to use. Uh, the CPUs uh, for now, let's just say, we'll give it eight. Uh, sorry, let's give it six. Okay, forward on that. Okay, the disk size, Windows 11 requires a minimum of 64 gig. Um, so we'll give them, let's say, 70. I, find, I do mostly just development on uh, Windows, uh, some Visual Studio Code stuff, uh, Rust and so forth. Uh, 100 gig is fine. Uh, but for 70 is good enough for the example today. Uh, give it a name, we're gonna make it Win 11, let's say, test. And the very important thing here, don't forget to click on Customize Configuration before install. Click Finish. And the very first step here is to change the firmware uh, from BIOS to UEFI. And then uh, just make sure that I select, yeah, Secure Boot. Select the Secure Boot one and apply that. Uh, then we can come and look at our CPUs, leave that as is for now. The SATA disk, this we want to change from uh, disk bus SATA to disk bus vert IO. That is basically the whole reason that this video exists originally, was so that we can have very fast uh, disk access and uh, the vert IO uh, drivers are much faster than using the SATA ones. Okay, then our SATA CD-ROM, uh, sorry, apply that. Our SATA CD-ROM, yes, is link linking to the Windows one. Now we need to add another CD-ROM drive. Um, so it's storage, and we come to CD-ROM. Uh, leave the bus type on SATA. The thing here is, um, what we want to, why, the reason why we, ha we need the second drive is because of the uh, Windows 
uh, drivers that we downloaded, that little ISO file that we downloaded. So if we come to browse local here again, this Virtuin IO. All right, so that's uh, that's this this link here. Okay, so double click on that, and uh, all good there. We apply that. Uh, is okay. You probably won't get this error if it's the first time you're doing this. Um, but I've already I've got another Windows machine that's using this as well, or originally used it on installation, and I haven't, you know, just disconnected it so it's just telling me that it's in use for something else uh, that's fine doesn't matter okay you can come to your uh, network device and change that to vert io that you don't that doesn't really make much of a speed difference but if you want to that is part of the reason for the video so i'll, I'll change it to that and video we're going to leave on qx alpha for the moment now we need to add a tpm module so in this list here, you'll see there's TPM, okay? And this is this part I'm not sure about. Um, I only used it with pass through, the pass through type because you know, I mean, with my new machine now, I actually have a TPM module. But maybe emulated because that is software emulated. That therefore doesn't require you to have a TPM module, I would assume. But you guys can test that uh, and see, you know, if that works. I'm going to be using pass through. If you do use pass through, though, only one virtual machine can use your TPM module at a time. So you can't have like two virtual machines uh, both using TPM module. Now, this is a very important little bit here. Um, this is the version of the TPM module that it's using. Uh, TIS is an older one, CRB is a newer one. Um, I, I, I I tried CRB and then I, I can't start the installation. Um, so TIS works for me. That was just by experimentation. You, you would probably have to do the same thing. It's going to be one of those two. Uh, so I select TIS and finish on that. And we could say begin installation. Sorry, apply changes, yes. All right, and there we go. All right, and next. Okay, I my actual Windows 11 does have a key. On this one, I'm not going to enter a key. I'm just going to say I don't have a product key. That will so once we've installed this, there's certain customizations you won't be able to do, but that's fine. This is just for a test. I'm going to select here Win 11 Pro. And next. And now it's going to actually do a compatibility test to see if Windows 11 can run on this machine, this virtual machine. And the fact that it shows you that means it can. Otherwise, it'll show you an error message saying that this, comp you know, your computer doesn't qualify. Um, and we're next on that. We do a custom. Okay, now you'll see it hasn't picked up any disks that we can do the install to. And the reason is because of the driver that we need to add. So we click on load, go to browse. We click on our second driver, uh, uh, CD-ROM that we added, go to AMD64, and select, the previous video was W10, this one we select W11, because it's Windows 11. All right, and we say next. And there we have it, it's now detected the hard drive, and I mean, you can now do whatever you want to it, but typically you just say next. And it will start doing the installation and so forth, and it will run through that. Once that's finished, um, I'll continue with the video again. So because of the fact that we are using Virt.io for our network uh, um, device now, um, Windows still doesn't have those drivers installed, so therefore we cannot connect to the internet. But we'll get to that point uh, further down and install and everything will be okay. Just hold on. And there we have it. Uh, we are inside of Windows. Now, if we right mouse click here and we go to display settings, you'll notice that we cannot change the display resolution. Okay, that's because of the drivers and so forth. All right, so we right mouse click on the little Windows logo here and we go to device manager and uh, we'll see uh, so it's other devices ethernet controller and uh, we say update driver browse my computer for drivers and now we 
point it back again at our CD, our second CD-ROM drive, and we OK on that. And so it's just the drive. We say next. It searches for. It's now gone, and we should have a, a network connection. Uh, let's just start up Chrome again. Uh, I'll refresh it. There we go. We got internet. Now we need to go to this link. Okay. And let's install it. Whoopee, we've done it. Um, let's see if we've got display settings yet. Uh, let's make it 1920 by 1080, let's say. And we keep those changes. And then we change the view resize to VM. And there is Windows 11 running inside of uh, a virtual machine running on top of Linux. And it's not really much more that you need to do here. Uh, what we can do it is just the uh, same as what I did last time. Uh, Control shift escape. Let's go to the task manager. Uh, more details. And okay, so CPU, let's look at the logical. Uh, where are we? Change graph to logical. Okay, so it tells me there's only two processes. Um, I don't know if, and you'll notice it picks it up as two sockets, okay? But I don't know if there really is much of a speed difference if you actually change these, you know, what the, what it looks like here, yeah, instead of having two uh, uh, graphs having 16. I haven't really tested if there's a speed difference. I think there is. Um, I seem to remember from some time ago, uh, I looked at something like that, and I think there was, um, but I'm not so sure. But I think let's go and try that anyway. Let's just see if we can change the number of uh, virtual cores that we are going to be using in Windows here. Okay. So. Oh, and the other thing was also to change our video from QXL to Vert.io. Um, you can go do that. I, I've noticed one small little problem on my machine. Um, I doubt you'll get it, but now that you've installed the drivers inside Windows, you should be able to set that to Vert.io now and boot up again, and you'll be using that. But QXL is just as good. Uh, well, close enough. So if we come to CPUs here, so it basically ignores, you know, we, we, we're giving him six, but it picks up, you know, two sockets, for instance. So it kind of ignores what we give him there. So we're going to manually set it to something. And it is one socket, uh, and let's say and there's our twelve. Now, also something I noticed that sometimes or not sub I've only noticed this with Windows 11. If I change those so the, 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 the CPU configuration like I just did now, if I do that before I've installed Windows, then I, I get an error. But it looks like it's actually um, a Vert Manager error. It's complaining something about my CPU doesn't support hyperthreading, which of course it does. So I don't know why, but always after I've installed Windows, I can go and change it, and then there we are. Um, running. So just keep that in mind. Um, so initially it doesn't really matter what you set it to. After you've installed Windows, go back and set it to something similar to the way I just did it now. Yeah, guys, that's it. Um, 
Windows 11 running inside of a virtual machine. And uh, everything is good. See you next time. Bye.